Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a pleasure to welcome you here for this uh, Swoop event. Um, I would say um, you have seen outside, we have some uh, working tables. Um, don't make it, let's not make it too formal. It's really, uh, we want to we wanna work together, try to find solutions on uh, on the water issues uh, that that we uh, face uh, all today so um but we are very pleased that you are here that you are here so numerous and that uh, our swoop group is really um a good group which is functioning well and which brings together um, many stakeholders uh, it's also nice to see so many uh, familiar faces so really most welcome from my side um, sorry, I didn't present myself. I'm Franziska Freiburg House from the Swiss Embassy. Um, and uh, with that, I would already like uh, to give the word to uh, our ambassador, to the Swiss ambassador to the UAE and Bahrain, um, His Excellency uh, Massimo Bacci, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Francisca. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the, Swiss, uh, to the Swiss Pavilion from my side also. When you are an ambassador, you have a few privileges, and one of those privileges is uh, diplomatic immunity. Unfortunately, I had to realize that uh, diplomatic immunity doesn't prevent you from falling from horses. So this is why in front of you today, you have a kind of a broken ambassador, but uh, I'm very much pleased to welcome you here uh, at the Swiss Pavilion for this uh, uh, sustainable water platform uh, that I had the, the occasion to accompany already. And uh, I appreciate very much the continuity of your work and uh, the fact that the platform is growing. And uh, especially I appreciate very much the fact that uh, it encompasses uh, several stakeholders of the society from the public and the private sector. And I, this, I think this is very much the key of our uh, success. I think that there is no need to stress the importance of water, certainly not here in the UAE, uh, certainly not in Switzerland, uh, although we have an abundance of water. We have lots of water in Switzerland that we share with the rest of Europe. Nevertheless, we are preoccupied because the situation when it comes to water in Switzerland is becoming a critical situation. We've been up, we built up our society on water that comes from snow in Switzerland. But our glacier in Switzerland are melting. And uh, for example, we produce two thirds of our electricity with water. So you see the strategic impact of water and why we are preoccupied. And this is only one of the dimensions of uh, water. And this is probably one of the reasons why we are very much engaged internationally also when it comes to promote issues related to uh, water. And we have been advocating a lot to make sure that water becomes a sustainable development goal of uh, the UN. And I think that uh, this is probably the main reason why we are that much engaged here also at Expo. And uh, we will make the last month of the Expo the month of water here in the Swiss Pavilion with several uh, events that we are planning uh, already around uh, and with uh, uh, water. I think that uh, it is important uh, to make our community, our friends of water, if I can call it like that, to grow uh, again, because uh, as soon as uh, we, uh, and I speak uh, for a large portion of the population, as soon as we will realize how strategic the importance of water is for all of us, for our well-being, I think that uh, this group will have a bright uh, future. This is very much the case in Switzerland. One of the uh, issues political issues that we are discussing in Switzerland now is uh, how we will produce our electricity. So uh, I think that uh, this can be a kind of a, an alert uh, for all uh, of us. And when it comes from government that I have the honor to represent here, uh, we have to be ready 
to offer a solution. And to offer a solution, we need uh, all of you. And this is why, again, I'm particularly happy that uh, you play the game and you continue to play the game in favor of uh, water-related issues uh, here in the UAE and around the world. Uh, you, the UAE, you are already in the Security Council. Uh, this is uh, excellent. Uh, we are planning to join the Security Council uh, uh, very soon. And uh, for one year, well, for one year, eventually, we would be together with the UAE in the Security Council. And uh, this will be an additional, extremely important and strategic instrument to advocate plenty of uh, issues, including uh, uh, water-related issues, because uh, water is also a synonym of peace and uh, security. Thank you so much uh, for being here today. And a special thank go to Mrs. Mosal Naimi, uh, who is uh, the Director of Productivity and Demand Site Management at the Ministry of uh, Energy and Infrastructure, to whom I give uh, immediately uh, the floor. Thank you so much uh, for being here today. Thank you. So, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Your Excellency. It's a great opportunity to be here among a lot of uh, great mentalities here today. So, thank you so much for having me. Uh, um, so my name is Mozan Naimi. I'm Director of Productivity and Demand in Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure. Okay, so uh, I will just uh, uh, highlight some uh, important points uh, that uh, UAE have reached uh, 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 in the last couple of years. So uh, starting from uh, 2017, uh, UAE have uh, launched the uh, energy um, strategy, UAE Energy Strategy. It has a lot of a dr uh, drastic change into the energy and water since we are aiming or targeting to uh, increase the mix of energy from 25% to 50% by the year 2050. And in uh, 2000, uh, 2018, uh, UAE launched the Water Security Strategy uh, 2036. It aims to, um, uh, to reduce the total demand of water by 21%. Of total uh, of total water, uh, water resource, and uh, uh, again in the same year in 2018, uh, UAE have launched the uh, national food uh, security strategy to uh, 2051. It was aiming to implement uh, um, a best practices in in agriculture uh, uh, in agriculture to increase the, uh, increase the productivity and the, uh, to help maintaining the ecosystem of UAE. And uh, recently, uh, last year actually, uh, UAE have launched the National Demand Side Management. Uh, it aims to, uh, uh, to uh, it, it's targeting actually four main sectors, the top consumers in UAE for energy and water. But uh, since we are one of the great countries in using water, uh, we are targeting the uh, building, uh, the building sectors in UAE since we have uh, more than 5,000 building, 5,000 assets in UAE, and also we are targeting agriculture, as I mentioned. Uh, the main objective of, of DS, uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when we start uh, planning for the demand side management, we, we try to bridge the gap between the existing local uh, demand side management uh, and uh, raise it up to the national level. We work in four main sectors, I'm, as I mentioned before. We have building agriculture, manufacturing, and transportation. And that came also with um, a, 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 what do you call it, is um, um, an awareness program, a, a, a whole awareness program for five uh, targeted segments of uh, community. We are targeting students, uh, families, um, workers, tourists, and also um, employees in different sectors. Uh, uh, the demand side management was designed with 18 uh, from the stakeholders. We have uh, local entities, government entities, and also the private sector. 
Uh, and the demand side management, uh, when, uh, once, uh, as I mentioned before, we targeted the agriculture uh, and the building. We have different initiatives. Uh, for example, we have the water food nexus. I think Mocha is doing a great job in that. Uh, it's, it aims to, um, uh, 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 there is a committee for, uh, uh, from food security strategy to ensure they're coordinating policies and planning the water and agriculture. For example, the water supply and incentive programs. And we have another initiatives like enhancing the water and the crop productivity. Uh, uh, um, we are trying to um, implement an intelligent system for irrigation. Um, uh, uh, for, for example, the, uh, the hydroponic and vertical farming. And also trying to develop, uh, uh, an, um, excuse me, sorry. Uh, trying to uh, develop a groundwater and uh, database for UAE. And also we have another initiative is uh, the use fit for purpose water. Uh, we are trying to develop a federal policy for, uh, uh, for uh, ground, water, uh, ground water and recycled water. And also we are trying to uh, implement uh, different initiatives in building sectors. For, a ground, uh, for example, the building retrofits for water we have the efficient irrigation for the uh, for building uh, and landscaping, and uh, also reporting the non-revenue water among the utilities and come up uh, to come up with the better equipment standards. And the last one is working on building codes to enhance the water uh, use in all buildings. So this is a group of initiatives we are working with uh, with our colleagues from uh, government and uh, private sector and the public sector in general. Uh, and uh, I have it was uh, very informative. I'm sorry, this is uh, uh, in general a summary of what we are doing. So thank you so much again for having me. And um, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Naimi. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, for these uh, introductory words. Um, it's very impressive, um, the strategies and policies that the UAE has uh, in, uh, in dealing with uh, sustainable environment uh, and uh, water issues. Um, yeah, really impressive. Um, so now um, we go to already to our, um, let's say, interactive part uh, of this uh, meeting. Um, you have seen outside, we um, put four tables outside and we have four hosts for the tables. I don't know who is familiar with this uh, format uh, World Cafe. Um, I will explain it uh, shortly. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have four tables, four topics, Four hosts. Um, one of the topic on a table is agriculture. The host for this table is Dr. Khalil Amar from ICPA. <laughs> Please, <laughs> thank you. Um, we have another topic, the second topic. This is construction, and the host of this table is Mr. Johan Kama. Senior Environment um, uh, Engineer from Hutch. Johan, thank you. We have the third table, which is dealing with the topic desalination. The host is Mr. Riyad Bestani, founder and general ma manager of EcoSquare. Thank you. And uh, we have the pleasure that we have uh, on the policy and advocacy table, Mrs. Aisha Al Suabaidi, <laughs> thank you, um, from the Minister's Office uh, um, and uh, Project Manager in Mokai. Thank you very much uh, for accepting this short, uh, short-term um, host um, uh, work. Um, so. We have these four tables. The hosts, they stay on the table. The, all the others, they move. They, what, what we did, we put a name tag. You will find a name tag when you go outside. Your name tag on one of the table. This is where you start. You start at that table. And then I will uh, ring the bell 
after 20 minutes, and then you change the table. You go to the next one. When you start with desalination, um, we will guide you to which table um, you, or let's say we, we go, um, no, we will tell you where to go. <laughs> so 20 minutes each, and uh, the host is taking notes. Um, the host is asking questions and uh, will take notes. You can also um, uh, write uh, things down. It's, it's, it's the guidance of the host who is free, um, how he wants to organize uh, his group. And um, at the end of this, uh, when you have passed on these uh, four tables, we will come back inside here again, and the hosts will present the outcome. Of, this, uh, of the discussions. So all of you will have discussed uh, all these four topics and the host will then report back. Uh, actually, is, are there some questions? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, and with that, I would say, uh, let's go outside. I hope you all have a coat <laughs> with you. And, uh, and start uh, with the work. Thank you very much. So uh, welcome back to the warm uh, event room. It's much more comfortable. Um, please take a seat, all of you. I'm. I'm a little bit um, um, pressing you because uh, is it uh, because Johan has to leave? Then um, he's one of our hosts, and uh, so that he can he will be the first one uh, who gives his feedback. So what we are doing now is that all the hosts are giving like a summary a feedback of what was discussed uh, on their table. And uh, what we are also going to do is um, we will send to all of you then also uh, a little summary of um, what was uh, um, what is the outcome of the discussions. But thank you very much uh, for your active uh, participation. It was really a pleasure. Um, yeah, I take the, the microphone then uh, after the four hosts. And please, Johan, I give you the floor. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, um, I'm so glad to be here amongst all you people. Uh, thank you, Francesca, for inviting me as well. Um, I am sorry pressing for time. I have a call to take. But I was hosting the construction uh, segment. Uh, I would... Don't quote me for this, but I do feel it's not the most consuming um, uh, sector for water uh, when you compare it to agriculture and industries and stuff. But uh, construction is significant uh, in the GCC, we know that. Um, however, the construction process is very neglected, uh, how we manage our construction process and how we manage our buildings and stuff. I think there's a huge need for policies to come in and kick in and really um, get the uh, water consumptions down. Um, we know how important water is, and there are a few pointers that I've uh, gathered from the discussions that we have. Um, one of them is I think we should focus a lot on reducing the demand, uh, may it be residential or hospitality or commercial. Uh, the second thing is we should focus on a life cycle approach and, you know, where the where we can install filtration process uh, systems in new buildings rather than you know not providing them with any uh, processes where they can use uh, you know bottled waters and stuff we should have in-house filtration processes provided a uh, new building should come up with new technologies and adaptive thinking of how we can differentiate between gray water and black water and then Equally, we can treat the gray water, at least if not the black water. Um, the awareness around the facility management is very important. They are the ones managing the building for 10, 15 years. Um, data management and data gathering 
of uh, buildings. Smart buildings is a new way to forward and how we should be looking at smart metering as one of the uh, uh, strategies to identify leakages in the building. Um, one of the very interesting points was that the most amount of water that was used in villas was irrigation and car washing, which uh, I understand irrigation, but car washing was quite a surprise there. So I think uh, we should switch to innovative techniques for irrigation and, uh, I don't know, reduce the amount of water that people are using for car washing. I've seen it personally in my buildings. Every time there's a car wash, there's literally so much water on the floor. Uh, it's very common, and I think it's about educating who we work with and how we operate. Um, we also see um, if we can push in for more incentives on people retrofitting the buildings, um, and that's the way the rental market probably will also start retrofitting uh, and not just the owners. So those are the points from my discussions. Thank you so much, everyone, for giving your feedback as well. Uh, So, uh, who wants to come next? Dr. Aisha? So, my name is Aisha. I have the policy and advocacy group. Um, the first thing that we did talk about was trust. Trust is very important, and um, we did talk about that trust is very, um, there's a, a very high trust for the government here, and the government sets good examples. There's also uh, leadership vision, and but however, it, the trust always needs to have checks and balances from independent authorities. So we talked about, do you trust drinking water from your tap water or from your bottled water? So your tap water could have could be much better than the water you're drinking in, the, in your bottled water, but you don't have that trust or that information or that data. So even having data and bringing data and letting, uh, be, having data be at the tips of your finger points. So one of the gentlemen also gave an example of he had a water leak in one of his bathrooms, and the next day Diwa sent him a note that you might have a water leak, and they were surprised to, yeah, we did, they had a water leak in one of the bathrooms. So... Having that simplicity and information at, the, at your fingertips is really important. Then we wanted to talk about the full cycle. How is it that the government, what is our role in, as the government um, in providing the public good for, and public service for not just the public sector but also the private sector and research and academia? So instead of having reports that are just... Sit, that sit on a shelf or that we pay for, how do we take that information and actually uh, change the policies to reflect that? How do we change the, the experiences that the private sectors have and learn from the private sectors so then we can also improve? So this is very, very important is to have the dialogue. A lot of the uh, people here uh, were also frustrated that they couldn't have the dialogue. They had tried to talk to... Um, uh, government entities for their businesses or for their ideas and so maybe facilitating a way where you could reach the government in and now we're at the age of technology and AI so it's this is very important but um, maybe we have this whole concept of the Medjlis con concept here in the UAE where you can reach the decision maker or the leader or Sheikh Mohammed uh, directly so um, why don't we hold like majlises where we hear feedback and we create that positive dialogue? But also to look at things from the full circle and the full cycle. So if I'm going to be an investor and I want to uh, bring my technology here, I need to trust the system. I need to trust the court systems. I need to trust the contract. I need to trust that my investment here, this is a safe and trustworthy country where I can put my investment. And I think from the government, we need to be responsible about which investments, uh, uh, encouraging responsible investments. So for the Food and Water Security Office, which is now part of the Ministry of Climate Change, they created the Food Tech Valley, which was like a food hub that, had, that would have everything from technology, ease of business, facilitation, people who could have those dialogues and see different um, 
types of technologies that could be at the tip and also have that education and awareness. But you also need to think of the whole system. So um, it was a pleasure sitting with, with all of you. And I think uh, the more discussions we have like this, and I want to thank the Swiss Embassy for bringing the private sector, the government sector, and the research, I think these dialogues will encourage us to do more and more. And there's always room for improvement. We, even if we, we could be the best in one thing, why not be better like, uh, with, uh, with time and with education and with part partnering and listening and being fair and equitable to everybody? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aisha, for this uh, very good feedback. Um, so, Dr. Amar? Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, thank for uh, all uh, colleagues who participated in this uh, important discussions. So in our group and uh, innovative solutions for uh, sustaining uh, agricultural water, uh, we tried first to look at uh, the challenges that we have in UAE and the GCC, where we touched on uh, the limitation of the available water resources. And at the same time, there is a challenge to increase the agricultural production to meet the food uh, security and uh, uh, like according to the new uh, baskets that we have. So how we can uh, go for from there and what are the other uh, challenges that are available and we need to uh, highlight those. So based on the discussion that we have, we found that um, in addition to these challenges, there are also uh, other challenges in terms of uh, the farmers they might not uh, still adapt any new innovations or technologies that uh, comes to the market because they are not aware about it. So even if there are some innovations, but still they are far away from uh, implementing it, this means that they need also awareness about uh, these technologies, how they can understand it and how they can have it in the field. And uh, this is one of the key things or problems that uh, lacking and affect uh, expanding the use of innovations. Uh, also, we uh, discussed also in terms of uh, what uh, should be grown here in terms of the saving of the water, because we know when we need to sustain the agricultural production and have more sustainable solutions, this means that we need to see what the crops should be grown according to the local conditions and availability of the water resources. Otherwise, we'll keep depleting these resources or bringing any new innovations or new waters. Uh, other solutions, they looked also at such as to use uh, or expand the use of treated wastewater in agricultural production because it's a valuable resource and can add value in terms of uh, expanding this agricultural production. Uh, some other solutions, uh, they mentioned also to look at hydroponic, aquaponic, and all these uh, uh, systems that are available and how we can expand using it and why in uh, in sustainable way of course and in affordable way um, we looked also at uh, uh, other uh, options uh, like uh, some of the innovations that uh, were mentioned like to look at uh, new innovations in terms of the molecular uh, st uh, structure of water or even more innovations in terms of uh, magnetic water or many other innovations that are available in the market, which can solve the salinity problem or other problems in the water that can make the agricultural water more usable, but also how to link uh, these innovations and uh, uh, from the private sector with the research and development and have it uh, also impact of this research to test these products and then learn from this exercise and try to expand that when uh, you decide to invest in the market. Because linking all these together can give better idea for the private sector to expand its uh, existence in the system, in the market, and then can uh, give more confidence for the users at the end and uh, market these products. Um, also, we talked about uh, the incentives that uh, are available and uh, the subsidies that are used already in the systems here did not 
like work well in terms of saving water. But we need to shift, for example, to have more incentives and more smart subsidies that are driven by the results, then you can encourage the farmer to save more water and then give this subsidy for the one who saves more water, for example. So there are different solutions at the policy level, at the farmer level, at the decision makers level that can help uh, achieve uh, better solution and sustainable solutions. Also, we uh, talked about the concept of virtual water in terms of importing high water consuming crops instead of growing it here and use and deplete our resources. So this can also save some of the water here. But also we need to look at the virtual water for export instead of uh, exporting more, for example, dates or whatever, then we need to decide uh, how much to produce and how much water to use. Uh, also, we thought about having the water, food, energy nexus solution uh, as a solution as well, because it helps us to sustain these uh, products, because um, looking at the energy side, looking at the emissions, looking at uh, the food chain, all these are interlinked and related. So looking at this perspective can help sustain the agricultural production. Um, also, we talked about the innovations in terms of the artificial intelligence, the sensor systems that are applied, uh, how we can expand using it, then uh, this can have uh, significant savings in terms of the water and improving the agricultural production and the uh, automation of these systems. So I think that's all what we discussed in our uh, group. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Amar. It was a lot that you discussed uh, and a lot of very relevant uh, issues, and thank you. Um, I have to say, I don't want to make promotion, but for example, the, the fresh salad from Carrefour in hydro, hydroponic uh, agriculture, I really love it. So local production uh, or regional production is really something which uh, is the future, I think. Um, so, Riyadh, um, the floor is yours for the desalination, uh, please. Thank you. Yeah, impressive. Uh, <laughs> it's difficult to go behind. <laughs> so it's going to be very short from our side. Okay, anyway, so it was a really interesting uh, debate. I learned a lot also myself because I was not uh, really an expert in desalination. So there was a lot of interesting uh, technical uh, and technology debate on the, around this desalination and wastewater treatment, basically, it was both. So what we did first is we, we tried to, to set up the, the main issue, the problem of desalination. And I think there was like two, three groups we agreed. It's like we're dependent on almost 100% on desalination today on what we're using. So there's really a, a, a huge dependency on, on the water we have today. And we have to find solutions to reduce that or to find alternatives, basically. Uh, so if we look at the technology side, uh, and it was shared by some of the participants that it's been like uh, a growing effort to reduce the loss of, uh, water that we were treating. So it went from 85% with using thermal plants. Now uh, reverse osmosis is going to 60%, and very soon new technology will, will help us reach 30%. So the trend is going in the right direction in terms of technology, which is, which is positive. And there's also solutions about, because desalination is an energy intensive uh, uh, industry, or not industry, let's say, uh, a process, uh, we have to find solutions to use non-fossil fuels. So solar is obviously a, a good one, but then there was like challenges about if we want to put a, a desalination plant in one area, probably the solar uh, plant is not going to be in the same because of, you know, technology requirements. So there's always going to be a challenge between, you know, putting the, finding the good location for the desalination plant and finding the good location for the solar plant. So, so again, some, some challenges there, but it's, it's something we can look into. And then we went more into, so what are the solutions now into uh, going out of desalination or using the best out of it. So the brine topic came out on the table, uh, several uh, groups. So there's a lot of research going on to try to use the brine, uh, to, to try to recirculate it, uh, making some circular economy about, about the brine. So, but it's uh, still at a research level, so it's not really scalable today uh, to make a proper um, 
use of it. Uh, wastewater came on on the second list of you know solutions or alternatives to desalination. So wastewater is is more of a cultural issue also today. So it's not something that we are ready to use in the region because of you know habits and 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 cultural uh, you know uh, traditions. So we need to work on this by going into awareness and education about how we can reduce the consumption of water, which is coming from desalination again today. So academia is, is one area, but also you know, promoting and, and training uh, everyone at home or in, in, in businesses to try to make sure they understand that it's a, a rare I mean, scarce uh, resource. So awareness is, is a big topic. Uh, policy is also, uh, we talked with, uh, I think she's not here, uh, with Muna about the policy which will come end of the year, I think 2022 or early 23. Yeah, for the treated water, yeah. So Exactly, yeah, so this is the one, yeah. Yeah, so this could be also a good push. On the federal level, okay, that's so th that could help also to you know try and try to f change the the mindset of people. Uh, there was also so in, in terms of alternative, um, like the water we use could be re injected in aquifer. So it was mentioned uh, in, in one group. So instead of because the wastewater is still have a long way to go, uh, we can use the 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 treated water and put it back into the aquifer where it will be filtered and after five, six years, then we can reuse it again. So it's a way of going around the, the problem and going in the aquifer first and then coming back to our tap in the second stage. Uh, using the AC water was mentioned in, in a group also uh, for irrigation of flushing from condensated AC. So, so there are sources, basically, we were looking at sources of water which are not desalinated that we can grow more so we can use more of this instead of desalinated water. So that, that, that was basically the, the target of the discussions uh, in, in different groups, which shows that there are potentials. Uh, we have to work, continue working on desalination, obviously, improving technology, finding ways to reuse the brine and so on. And we have to grow those other sources of water which are available here in big amount, uh, through policy, through awareness, and through uh, also uh, technical solutions to, to treat the water and, and be uh, ready to be used by everybody. So that's basically the, uh, the outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this was also uh, very interesting about uh, yeah, how to produce less desalinated water and how to better use the, the wastewater. So, yeah, with that, uh, we came uh, to an end uh, of this uh, um, working part of the event. We now um, go to, so, or let's say you are cordially invited for a, a little dinner. Uh, there will also be raclette, uh, this Swiss uh, speciality. Um, some are very much looking forward already. <laughs> please, please try it once, the ones who didn't have it. Uh, it's really delicious. Um, yes, so when we go outside, I think it will be ready and uh, just they will serve, help yourself. It would be a pleasure if you would stay uh, a little bit um, so that we can continue uh, talking. And what I also want to say, please, before you leave, before you take the elevator, we will put some uh, um, presents uh, for you because you all worked uh, so hard. It's actually a, a sick water bottle, so a reusable water bottle um, maybe next time you even bring it <laughs> with you and we learned that the tap water is very good so um, yeah we can fill this this bottle with tap water and um, yeah then we produce a little bit less waste so thank you very much and I wish you a pleasant evening thank you very much for coming